What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here. Today we are reviewing three different 24-105s. One from Sigma, one from Canon, and the newly released 24-105 for Sony. So in Nashville right now, it is 20 degrees outside. I did not want to go outside to review these lenses, so we found the next best thing. We went to Opryland Hotel. I'm pretty sure it's one of the largest hotels in the world, even bigger than some of the ones in Vegas. We're really excited to test these three lenses on the Sony a7R 3 Now, obviously the Sony lens is a proper E-mount lens, so it goes natively onto the camera. But for these other two lenses, the Sigma and the Canon, obviously they have an EF mount. So we're gonna be using the adapter from Sigma to convert from EF to Sony. The reason for that is to fairly compare all these lenses on the exact same body. The a7R 3 is one of our favorite cameras and we've done two different reviews on it. So if you're interested in this camera, check out our other videos. We'll link them in the description. So let's get started. I don't wanna drop these. So for our first test, we're gonna be testing the sharpness wide open on these lenses. These lenses aren't the fastest in the world. They're F4 lenses. So we want the F4 performance to be as sharp as possible because we're probably gonna be shooting at that aperture quite a bit. So I'm just gonna shoot these first tests with all three lenses at 24 millimeters, wide open at F4. First shot is with the Sony 24 to 105. Next, we're gonna test the Sigma 24 to 105 Art Series lens. Now, if you're familiar with the Art Series, they're all really great lenses. They're really sharp. They're a great value for what you get. So I'm, I'm anxious to see how the 24 to 105 performs. I've heard good things about this adapter. We'll test autofocus next, but for now, we're just looking at the sharpness wide open. Next, we're gonna use the infamous Canon 24 to 105 Mark II. This lens is fairly new. I've heard a lot of good things. Let's see how this performs wide open. We're here in my office using Lightroom comparing the images to one another. As far as I'm aware, Lightroom only lets you do two images at a time that you can compare. So we're gonna start out with the Sony versus the Sigma. The Sony is on the right hand side of the screen here and the Sigma is on the left. So wide like this, looking at these two images, they look very similar. Let's go ahead and go into a one-to-one -one crop. And as you can see, already the Sigma seems to be holding up a little bit better. It's a little bit sharper. We don't have as much chromatic aberration going on. Let's zoom in a little bit further. Looking at the Sony on the right, you can definitely see that chromatic aberration happening. It seems to be pretty much non-existent on the Sigma. So let's go to the corners. That's another area where lenses tend to fall apart. And the opposite is true here. So the Sigma is kind of falling apart in terms of sharpness on the corners. You can see these fine details here getting a little bit soft on the Sigma and uh, we're still getting a little bit of chromatic aberration on the Sony, but it is very, very sharp. Going all the way down the Sony, there is quite a bit of chromatic aberration going on all over this image. Chromatic aberration is something you can get rid of fairly easily in Lightroom. Again, look at the detail on the leaves here. You can very clearly see the sharpness detail between these two lenses. So let's compare the Sony to the Canon next. The Sony again is on the right and the Canon is on the left. And as you can see, the Canon is performing really well. It's got some good contrast, good sharpness. It looks really good. The next would be uh, some detail here in the middle. Let's just look at these, these trees here. Everything's looking good in the middle center frame of the image. Um, but let's see what happens if we go to the top left corner. The Sigma fell apart and it looks like the Canon has some really strange chromatic aberration going on. It looks almost 3D, you got some blue and red <laughs> um, going on there. Let's go to the other corner, bottom left corner, where you can see that little palm tree. And definitely you can see the sharpness difference there. The Canon is very soft. When you look straight into the center, like right here, this is dead center. Everything looks really sharp, really good on both. But once you go to the corners, that's where you really see the, sh the Sony start to really outperform both of these lenses. <laughs> now we're gonna be testing the autofocus performance on these lenses. I'm interested to see how this native lens compares 
to the adapted lenses. I'm going to shoot at 35 millimeters wide open, focus on a tree or a different object here, and then focus on the background and see how fast that performs. We're just gonna film the back of the screen here so you can kind of see how quickly the focusing happens. So let's go. So as you can see on the Sony lens, it's almost instant going from the background to the foreground here. The Sigma lens, not even close, it's way slower. In fact, it seems to almost be missing the focus on some of these. Right, this is the Canon. Didn't even get it at all there. I'm gonna try again. It's not even getting focus. Okay, now it's working. So really the main takeaway here with this test is buy native lenses. The autofocus performance using a native E-mount lens on a Sony camera is always gonna give you the best performance. And if you're a stills photographer, there's no reason why you should be adapting lenses just because you wanna keep your Canon glass. There's a little game going on behind me. We're gonna test the image stabilization on all three of these lenses, starting with the Sony one. Now this lens has a little bit of an advantage because it's using both the IS in the lens and the in-body in image stabilization inside the camera. So I'm just gonna walk through the arcade here. Looks really buttery smooth. Very nice. That looks so smooth it could actually be like a slider shot. So I'm surprised, the Sigma lens actually is enabled with the in-body image stabilization, and it's also using the OS uh, of the lens here, right there. You can see that the in-body image stabilization is initiated, so in theory, this should be fairly close to the Sony lens. So we're gonna do the same test again. I'm just gonna walk through this little place, and then we get a shot of the Terminator guns. So I can actually feel some jittery Motion looks good. It's not as smooth for sure as I expected. It's parallax movement and at 70 millimeters. It doesn't feel as smooth, but we'll see in the image. So we've got the Canon lens on here now, and as you can see, the in-body image stabilization is turned off. So that's interesting. The Sigma had in-body image stabilization and lens stabilization, so did the Sony. This one is only doing lens for some reason. Believe it or not, that's actually really smooth. Even without the in-body image stabilization. That feels smooth as well. These are all just shots that I typically like to get. So as I'm looking at the back of the screen, it feels like Sony is number one, Canon is number two, and the Sigma is number three. Even though the Sigma has the in-body image stabilization and the IS, Canon has done a better job with their IS just in the lens. Our next test is going to be testing wide open at 24 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and 105 millimeters. We'll compare the image, see how they look, see how the bokeh performs, and, uh, and then from there we're gonna do an aperture test going from f4, 5.6, up to f8. Right now we've got the Sony on the right again, just like before, and the Sigma on the left. So this is at 24 millimeters at f4. Let's go one to one. And right away I can see the Sigma is quite a bit sharper. Uh, that may be partly my fault for not holding the camera as still as possible. So next this is at 50 millimeters. Let's zoom in to two to one. Look at the corners. Uh, we got some bokeh going on here, so let's look at that. The Sony has more circular shaped um, bokeh, and the Sigma tends to have kind of more oval shaped. I personally really like how the Sony bokeh looks. It looks really nice, and the Sigma looks kind of like squash. It, doesn't, it looks like cut up squash when you put it on the skillet, you know? That's what it looks like to me. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> um, but as far as sharpness goes, the Sony seems to be sharper actually. Um, I am seeing some more sharpness from the Sony. So 
Uh, I think at 50 millimeters, this lens is definitely beating the Sigma. All right, so at 105 millimeters, we've got the uh, Sony on the right again and the Sigma on the left. And looking at these images, they both look very good. The bokeh seems to be doing a little bit better on the Sigma at this focal length. As far as sharpness goes, they seem to look better. In fact, I think the Sigma is looking a little bit sharper. I think they're both winning here at 105 millimeters. Okay, so now we're comparing the focal length with the Canon and the Sony. On the right, we've got the Sony and the left, the Canon. So let's zoom in to one to two. Uh, the Canon definitely seems to be sharper in the centers. And again, it's softer in the corners. You can see these details here. It's definitely softer on the Canon. Let's move on to the 50 millimeter and you can see that the Sony is quite a bit sharper. The bokeh performance on the Canon looks good on the left. Nice circular patterns, uh, just like the Sony. Uh, I do think the Sony has better bokeh though. Okay, so this is at 105. Let's zoom in into the reef and this Sony is sharper. If you look at this little silver leaf here, you can see that it is sharper. Um, you can see the bokeh there, I think looks better on the Sony than on the Canon. You got some of those weird squash colors. I think again, a win for the Sony when it comes to performance all the way through the range, 24 to 105. Okay, so now we're gonna test the aperture performance, see how the sharpness looks from F4 to F5.6 to F8 just in terms of sharpness. So we got Sony on the right, Canon on the left. This was shooting at F4. If I zoom straight into the middle right away, the Canon is much softer than the Sony. It might have been off on focus, to be completely honest. Uh, wouldn't surprise me, the focus performance wasn't the best throughout the day. But let's look at the vignetting, if there is any. There is some vignette here going on with the Sony. Let's go to F. 5.6 now. Let's zoom straight in one to one. And it, now the Canon's looking a little bit sharper so it looks like the last shot was out of focus. Let's go to the corners here and see how it performed. Everything looks good, it looks sharp. Um, a little bit better than it was at F4 on the Sony as far as chromatic aberration. I'm not really seeing any vignetting going on here. Moving on to F8. F8 should be kind of the sweet spot of this lens, 5.6 to F8. And looks like some of those chromatic aberrations are still there with the Sony, but they are definitely not there at all with the Canon. In fact, the Canon looks very, very, very good. Almost optically perfect at F8. Really cool. So F8 on the Canon is almost perfect. So good to know. All right, moving on to the... Sigma compared to the Sony. Sigma looks very sharp, very comparable to the Sony. The Sony is falling apart in the corners at F4. Um, the Sigma is sharper for sure in the corners at F4. Let's move to F5.6 and we are zoomed into the middle of the image here. Everything looks very identical between the two. Uh, let's go up to the corners to see how that performs on both. The Sony is still soft. Very interesting. I've heard a lot of good things about the Sony lens, but from my test here, it really looks like um, it's still not very sharp, even up to 5.6. So let's go to F8. This should be the most prime point of the lens. Sony is starting to look a little bit sharper for sure uh, in the corners again and compared to the Sigma, we're starting to compete fairly well there. Uh, the two of them look pretty identical. Takeaway with this test is the Canon and the Sigma are both sharper. They're both cleaner all the way through from F4 to 8. The Sony, once you get to 8, at least in the corners, uh, you get some softness. The center sharpness and the ease of use of having a native lens like this. I still think that this is the better option if you're a Sony shooter. If you're a Canon shooter, then either one of these is gonna be good for you. It's really just kind of a toss up. These three lenses, ultimately, when it really comes down to it, are very similar and they're very good at what they do. I uh, hope you enjoy the video tests, the photo tests. Let us know if you have any questions 
or any any comments that you have, let us know below. Type away, type away, give us comments. Like this video if you liked it, and make sure to subscribe to the Kinatika channel. I'm going to Alaska this week, and we're gonna be doing some amazing tests with the Canon 6D Mark II. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so hang around, stay with us. I'm Dave Altizer, see you next time.